Yeah. Well, um, I, I wanted to share something about cheese. Not not cheeseburgers. I wanted to <laughs> share All something right. about about. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone, and um, we we got talking about um, because we just have blood, we're, we're, we're going through blood moon time, and I don't understand it all about the blood moon, but I've been reading and, and learning about them and stuff, and, and it goes back to our Jewish heritage, and God has, was, was talking about, the, we'll see signs and wonders in the skies, and it goes clear back to before uh, Christ was born before the Savior was born, and uh, the way the stars and the planets and stuff was aligned, you know, it it led the uh, three wise men, the kings from the Orient, to Bethlehem and such. And it's pretty in depth, but they have a um, show on Netflix right now. They're 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 running. It's called the uh, Four Blood Moons. Yeah. Yeah, the four blood moons, and it's very, very interesting. So if you get a chance and opportunity to, to see that, and then there's also a couple of books out. One's called The Harbinger, and the other one is the, um, what, what was the other one by the heart? Uh, the Harbinger. Yeah, The Harbinger, and what was the other book called um, that he did? I don't remember. I can't think of it right now, but anyway, it's, it, he has... Uh, another book out, and it's very, very good on that same subject. But what I was getting to is that when we become believers in Christ, there's there's so many things that come pulling at us one direction or another. And when I was talking to, to my friend this morning, we, we were talking about the different things that can pull us away from God, and that we we need to be steadfast, but how how can we know in our hearts that, that God is true to us and, and God is real? And I got to thinking, you know, along those lines that for me, I, I had to, the, the Holy Spirit wanted me to, to make God more tangible to me, more real in my mind. And, and the only way I was able to get to that point was one day my wife and my nieces went to see King Tut. And this was years ago when King Tut's uh, thing came to the Seattle Center. The, and it was about the boy king. And uh, my wife went and I, I stayed home because there was nothing for me to see or feel because everything's under glass. And and everything, but my wife came home with a book and some <laughs> materials and stuff, and um, I did some research, and I had to place, what my goal was is to place King Tut in, into time. What time frame was King Tut? And um, when, I, when I was able to achieve that, I found out it was it was before Christ. Well, how, how would I know that? You know, I, I didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. But it, it wasn't. It takes, take, takes you all the way back to the Book of Kings. And so I, I start comparing different things in history to time, to time factors. What, what took place at this time and what took place at that time. And um, what one of the other things is, is I got to thinking, um, quite a few years ago, I remember this, this uh, guy who I really admired. He used to have a radio program here in Seattle, and I went to his Bible school, this Randy Tyser, and I went to his Harvest Time School of the Bible. And uh, he, he, was, he gave a message one time about, you know, there really wasn't much difference between the time of Abraham and the, and the time of Abraham Lincoln. The Abraham Lincoln brought in the um, industrial age, and uh, but up until till that time, we we still used coal oil and and uh, we we didn't have electricity and, and a lot of this other stuff really wasn't prominently known or anything. 
and um, we, we still live pretty much the, the old-fashioned way. Um, and so I was thinking, well, that's from Abraham to Abraham. And um, then I got to thinking about Israel having a blood covenant. And so I got, got to place that in time. When, when did Israel get its blood covenant? Well, that was over in the Old Testament. And so I got to thinking, well, when did, when did, when, when did America, because there's only two nations that, that's had a blood covenant with God. Only two nations. And the other one was under, under who, who was our father? Who, who's the father of our nation? It was George Washington. And he's the one that made a blood covenant, him and our founders, our framers, who made this nation, who formed this nation and our Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, they, they made the blood covenant with God. All right, when you make a blood covenant with God, and we know that God is a covenant God, so I, I was able to place that into time. And that got to start in really short enough time. And I got thinking, boy, you know, that, that really does shorten up time. <laughs> and, and I was thinking, you know, all these different things that has happened to Israel, and you can go to, um, these are the days of, um, Jerem uh, no, these are the days of Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel. And, and you go and you read the book of Ezekiel, and you'll see the things that Israel went through as they turned their back against God. And you, you watch those same things are happening here in America. Well, Israel had the blood covenant, and America has had a blood covenant with God. Now, I got to thinking, you know, out of all the different religions and God's, that I have learned about and have read about that um, there's only one God that has ever been persecuted as much as Christ. Ever since time in memoriam, they've tried to get rid of Christ altogether, all the way through all of history. Even to this day, there are people trying to deny Christ and to get rid of him. They, they tried to burn all the Bibles up, destroy all the Bibles, not allow anybody to have a Bible. They persecuted any and all Christians. They tried to wipe off all Christians. And that's why they hated the Jews so much because Jesus was a Nazarene. He, he was a Jew. He came from Bethlehem. And, uh, so, you know, it, it's a progressive thing. And they know, and see, Satan knows, knows this. Satan knows this. And that is why it's so hard to stand for Christ in these troublesome times. And even when you look back in the days that Jesus walked upon the face of the earth, they were fighting the same battles. The people were fighting the same battles, trying to discover the truth. Is Jesus really the Messiah? Well, see, in that time, Jesus was the Savior because he came to save the Gentiles. He came to save all mankind. He made a way out of no way for everyone to make it into heaven. Anyone, just for the asking can have a personal relationship with Christ. That's all he asked. He didn't ask us to be this denomination or that denomination or anything else. He just wanted us to follow his principles and his values and stand for him and the truth. And that's why you can go clear back in, in, in the Old Testament, clear back into Genesis and, and read all the way through the word is always referred to as the truth. The truth. Jesus said in John, I am the truth and I am the way. In the beginning was the word. The word being 
It's what he says. And that's the only thing we can count on. All other gods have failed. All other gods have never stood up to the word of God. He's the only one that's had an empty tomb. He's the only one that's been able to walk on water without it being frozen. He alone is the one that says, I am the truth in the way that no man shall come to before my Father but through me, through my Son, Jesus Christ. See? And and to this day, we have people still fighting over the pettish, pettish things. Trying to see if they can outdo God. Make, my God is bigger than your God. My God is better than your God. And we got talking about parables. Because parables are very important over in the New Testament. Jesus spoke in parables. And that was to confuse the people that had an entitlement frame of mind. That I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to that. Even the people of faith in those days had that kind of attitude. And this was to separate them. Because if they hungered after Christ, the parables became easy to understand. And to this day, people argue and fight over parables. When it's so simplistic, it doesn't take a theologian, believe me, because I am not a theologian. It takes a heart that hungers for the truth. It takes a heart that wants to serve a God. It takes a heart that wants to know the truth from a lie and from a deceiver. When you can grasp that and you take it on yourself to take the responsibility to make God a personal relationship by reading his word those parables become easier to understand it's not magic it's because you are opening up the inner side of you the heart where God's Holy Spirit wants to dwell and you're allowing him to come in there where he can dwell and open your mind up to knowing what he means when he's talking in the parables. And they become clearer. What does God mean when he separates the chaff from the wheat? What is he talking about? And all these different parables. God is a very symbolic person. He's a very symbolic God. Everything has significance to him. God is one person you can be sure of that doesn't do idle chit chat. Because he's serious about the people who he loves and who he has created. He did not create life so that it can be destroyed. He created life because he loves people to have a freedom of thought and mind. They have the freedom of choice. Each and every one of us, we either we choose to believe the word of God to be the absolute truth or we choose to pick and choose whatever we want out of God's relationship and God's word but when you read in his word it doesn't work that way he doesn't work like that 
He wants all of you or none of you. He wants you all. Heart, body, soul, and mind. To be His. We become that temple that was built. We become that temple that was created for the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. <coughs> That's how we become the body of Christ. We are the church. It isn't any one denomination. It isn't any one style of building. It is those that have the personal relationship in Jesus Christ. Those people are the church. Those people are the temple of Christ. Those people are the ones that let the light shine. Those are the people that live the lifestyle of God. Yes, we're going to make mistakes. God provided a way for those mistakes. He provided a way so that they can be washed away as white as snow. As if we forgive, so shall we be forgiven. That's why we have to forgive those that have ought against us. So God can forgive us. That's why it's a continuous thing. We're saved daily by God's grace. We're washed clean by His blood daily. Because we choose to have that personal relationship and understand and we read His Word daily so we know how to correct ourselves and to respond to His loving Word. It's a freedom of choice. And there are those that will never catch on to that because they have given themselves over to a reprobate mind. And they have chose to think that there are other pathways to heaven, but there's not. God made that perfectly clear, and so did Jesus Christ when he walked here amongst men. He made that clear to his disciples that there's only one way and that's through him to his father. There's not many ways to heaven. There's only one God. There's not many gods. We only serve one God. This nation, just like the nation of Israel, was founded on the Judeo principle and the relationship with Jesus Christ. And if we could come together on that, if we could come together on there's only one truth and one way, and one principle, and one values to live by, and that is what God has handed down to us, we would not be sitting where we are today. It is not an easy, it is not a hard thing to understand. But it becomes constant, it becomes confused and becomes complex when Satan comes in there and plants seeds of doubt. And if we walk away from our principles and values, because when you walk away from those principles and values of God, you're serving Satan. Even a little bit, you're serving Satan. You cannot justify Satan. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for your lovely word. I thank you for the love that you have given us and the understanding that you have and the mercy. Above all, that you have mercy on us, Lord, that you have given us a way out of no way. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. Amen.